Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you what is on my shelves. A few of you requested to show you what kind of books I would recommend. Um, so today's the day. I have uh, costuming reference books and I have costume pattern books and some movie making of Harry Potter section and some uh, merchandise memorabilia of my favorite shows or movies. Um, but today we're going to specifically focus on the costume reference books and the pattern books. Now the first book I'm going to show is actually an original from 1835 and it was gifted to me by Jelge Bakker, also known as Monsieur Biedemeyer on Instagram. It's a ladies cabinet volume number seven from 1835 and it has some lovely fashion plates in it. The next one I would recommend is uh, the Smithsonian Fashion Book. It is a pretty thick book that I got at a book sale and it is um, uh, it, it covers a large range of the fashion history and shows some detail uh, but it's a good overall view of fashion history and how it evolves. Next up we have quite a few Victorian Albert books, um, like this one for example. I really like these because they show a lot of uh, technical drawings of how the garments are constructed that you would normally not see with the naked eye. The next one is a favorite of mine and it's actually an 1830s fashion plates book. And it's full of fashion plates, all from my favorite era, so um, maybe I'm a little bit biased. So the next book I bought at Versailles, and it's actually another book full of fashion plates, um, but it has um, like normal fashion plate, but also uh, regional traditional clothing. It's both in French and in English, so that's good. Another book I would highly recommend is the 25th anniversary of Tashin's fashion book. Um, it has 
Um, it comes in two different editions. You have like the really big and thick one, and I have the more compact that's split into two. And it, it's full of high quality pictures and detail shots of amazing and beautiful costumes. Now my last recommendation from this shelf is actually not necessarily clothing related, but it is a must have on the shelf. Um, it's a book about hairstyle going through the ages. And it's a really good reference book if you want to know um, any sort of hairstyle that goes with your specific costume that you're making. Now moving on to the pattern books, um, there is one that I, is actually the one I have owned the longest and it's actually where my collection started and that is this book and it's really big. It's the Evolution of Fashion and um, it basically it covers uh, for every decade, it covers um, information, a fashion plate and then um, patterns for both the men and the women from that decade. Um, it's not very good if you want to, at least I found it that it's not very um, handy to blow up these patterns, but it's a, a very good insight to um, see what kind of uh, patterns they use um, in their construction. Um, and then you can do more research on that or find um, similar patterns. But it's a really good insight for men and women costumes. Next I would recommend is actually um, another one of my favorites is the authentic Victorian fashion patterns. Um, I really like the system they use for drawing the patterns and um, it's a little bit limited time-wise which era they um, cover but they give you loads of different options for this specific era. Now a must have in your collection is Noel Walsh corsets and crinolines. Um, undergarments are vital in historical costuming. So this book is a must have in your collection. Um, as the title says, it covers corsets, um, but also stays, crinolines, bustle pads, everything basically. Now my all-time favorite go-to book are the books by Jane Hennessett. Um, especially the red ones, since this is the era I use most, which is 19th century. Um, but as the title already says, period costume for stage and screen, these are not historically accurate costumes. But for me, since I come from the theater and movie industry, this is right up my alley. So the costumes are made and constructed to look historically accurate, but are constructed through more convenient ways for everyday wear or for durability, for if you have to do eight shows per week in this costume. So this is, this is my jam. Now there are five books in total in this series. I only own four because they're really hard to come by and they're out of print. Um, but they basically cover the 18th century to 19th century, uh, medieval to 1500 and outer garments, book number one. The only one missing is book number two from the outer garments series. Now two other books I can recommend, but I haven't personally used them a lot, are these from the Victoria and Albert Museum. So 
these are women's dress patterns, but they are more for the 17th century, which is not an era I actually have done, but they have good reference photos, x-ray photos of extant garments, tutorials on how to do certain stitches, etc, etc. And they come in two, and I think there's also a third one for male costumes. Now my last recommendation is the same as the last one I had on the reference bookshelf, is about hair. Um, these ones are specifically for wig styling and it's split up in two parts. This, the first one is Egypt, uh, ancient Egypt to the 1830s and the other one is from the 1830s up to the present. Again, this is also focused on theater or movies. They show you how to do basically one hairstyle or maybe a variation of a one hairstyle for one decade and it's really good if you also pretty good with your with hair to set curls or pink curls and dressing wigs in general and the last book i'm going to recommend is the patterns of fashion series by janet arnold um, i have four out of all five books um, and they look like this there's are they are a little bit um Size-wise, inconvenient to put on the shelf. That's why they are on the back. These are also very handy and they cover a lot of different eras. And the patterns that are listed in these books are actually patterns from real existing garments. So I highly recommend this one. They also have one that's specifically on collars and one on corsets and stays, which is the one I don't have yet. But highly re recommend this book series as well. And that's it for today's video. I really hope that you liked the tour of my bookshelves and the recommendations I had for you. If you have any books that I haven't covered yet or I do not own yet, please let me know in the comments down below and I will gladly check them out. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!